before we begin today, I want to mention a couple of things. First of all, you might have noticed that I haven't been posting a lot recently, and that's because, yes, I am an ordinary schoolboy and I do have school, but I try to uh, film at least some of the videos every weekend, if, if I can. And uh, the second thing is, I've been noticing a lot of subscribers recently, and I generally want to thank everyone for that. It's gone from zero all the way to 94, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And today, let's begin, shall we? We're going to talk about a little bit more complicated topic than our 6 4 over 2, which is... Well, you might recognize this. It's called a TFT, and this is... It comes in all different kinds of sizes. I have 2.8 inch, 1.8 inch, and all sorts of different sizes. And uh, th these are basically just a very simple display. Okay, not very simple anymore, because <laughs> this is actually quite complicated if you really want to use one. And uh, I've got a 3.5 inch over here. And of course, uh, there's bigger ones, like 4 inches. But I do have a 2.8 inch. This, I believe, is a 1.8 inch. And then uh, some just displays here that are in some bubble wrap these actually don't have these pcbs on the back of them so uh they're a little bit more difficult to interface with but it's actually pretty fun this is a 3.2 inch and then this is also a 2.8 inch and actually i have one more 3.2 inch right here and obviously these have the fpc connections so uh in order to simplify that i made my own adapter board so really, you can just plug plug the display in here, and then attach the wires to a microcontroller or something else, and then you'll be able to use it. These switches over here can set the interface mode pins, which is a, a pretty... I think it's pretty cool, actually. So, uh, yeah, I actually have one more that actually fits on the Raspberry Pi. This is... Uh, you have a special type, type of software that you can run, and then uh, you'll be able to get a display on this device. And yeah, it is pretty slow because it uses SPI, but uh, we'll get into that later. And of course, we got this bad boy. This is a 8-inch LCD screen. Yes, it is an LCD. It is also a TFT. So, <laughs> and it also has an FPC connection. But to be honest, I kind of hate these. Because <laughs> you must get one of these adapter boards in order to use them. And then you can only uh, input v VGA and uh, HDMI. And this board also supports AV for some reason. I have no idea why, but anyway. So let's set, set this one aside for now because we're not really interested in this. And um, uh, let me just pick one to begin with. So yeah, this, <laughs> this series is going to be a lot of episodes because I'm going to be talking about many, many different kinds of displays. And I'll start with the easiest one, maybe? And that is these, I would say. These are the ones that have the FPC connections, and yeah, I know the FPCs are kind of annoying, but uh, you can design a driver board for them and an adapter, and uh, if you want the schematics, I might be able to link that in the description as well. So I'm going to plug the display in here and lock it. So now all I have to do is, these are the data pins, these are the interface mode select pins, and these are the control pins. So this is not commonly covered in some videos, but today I'll be showing you how to use the parallel 8-bit interface on this type of display. But before we get into that, we need to know some things about this display. This TFT, which is a 3.2 inch, and these have the same driver chips as this display and this display as well. And this driver chip is called the Cytronix ST7789. This is not very common in most displays, but I do know how to use this with Arduinos and all sorts of microcontrollers because, yes, I have made them flash the screen before, I have done tests on them, and yes, they do work for me. Now, in order to use the 8 bit interface, we're gonna have to set the interface mode pins to 1000. So this just tells the display that, okay, we're gonna use this display in 8 bit mode. And I've also got these little jumpers here because we're only going to be using the last eight data lines, and we have to tie these to ground, otherwise the display will not work. And also, this top is the parallel interface control pins, bottom is the SPI, but we won't be needing these. This jumper is to just set one of the SPI input pins to high, because otherwise the display will not work. I have absolutely no idea why they designed it like that, but anyway. At this point, you might be wondering, well, what are we going to use to control this TFT? Well... Remember our old friend, 
Mr. 6502 computer. Oh, yeah. We're going to mix things up a little bit today. And we're going to use the 6502 to control the TFD. Now, it might seem a little bit impossible, but it is indeed doable. So, how do we do this? Well, I decided I'm going to use the VIA, or Versatile Interface Adapter, to control the display. And we're going to hook the 8 data bits to over here to port A, which is basically. And don't worry, I will show you how to write the code for this. And I'll explain every single bit of it. Oh yeah, writing code was a bit of a pain. Then, we're going to connect the four interface pins. And you might be wondering, well, how about the power pins? Well, I'm going to use a special device. It's called an ST-Link. And I'm going to hook the power right to the ST-Link because it has two 3.3 volt pins. And yes, you can run the 6502 on 3.3 volts if you didn't know that. But probably not with the original 6502. You know, the MOS 6502, that's probably not going to work. But for 6502, the modern 6502, yes, it does. We're going to connect the power right there. And we need two more power wires. And we're going to hook these to the 6502. 5 volts over here, ground over here. And actually, we're going to connect 3.3 volts to the power and ground. Believe it or not, that's it. That's it for the hardware. Now, let's write some code. Now, before we write in 6502 assembly, let's see how this works with an Arduino. So, here we're defining our pins, which is our four control pins. We've also defined some color values that will come in handy when we're trying to clear the screen. And then the two commands, LCD, CMD, and LCD data. These separate functions, one of them writes command, and one of them writes parameters, or color data, to the display. And all that really is different is a register select. So you can see, uh, for a command, register select is 0, and for data, register select is 1. And then we're just basically replicating the data that's been sent into this function into our data pins. And then we're tying CSV low and CSV high. And also for write, we're going to go tie that to 0 and then back to 1. So that just writes 1 byte to our display. And same over here. We're going to write one byte into our display because our display is in 8-bit mode. And then the next function we have to worry about is this LCD init function. So I will put the 6502 code and this Arduino code in the, in the description if that's allowed. And you can see we've got a couple commands here. This one's software reset. This one's uh, display enable. And then the rest are just uh, RGB settings. Gamma control, VCOM control, power control, all sorts of stuff that we really don't have to worry about. And, uh, yeah. Pretty simple stuff. And one more thing we have to note in this init function is I've set the RGB interface mode to 16 bits instead of 18 bits. Why? Because it will be much more simpler with our 6502 because it's an ABIT processor and, uh, yeah, ABIT processors, they like 16 bit more than 18 bit. Let's go all the way down here and focus on this command over here. Area cell is crucial when we want to write pixel data to the display. Let's say we want to write just one pixel to the display. How do we do that? Well, we select the address area that we want to write to. So we have four variables here, x0, y0, x1, and y1. These are the start and end coordinates for what, wherever we want to write pixel data to. And the first command, 2a, and then we write the top 8 bits of our x, and then the uh, bottom 8 bits. And same for our x1, which is our end x, top 8 bits, and then bottom 8 bits. And exactly the same for our y, top 8 bits, bottom 8 bits, and so on. y0 first, and then y1. And then the last command, 0x2c. That basically means we can start writing some data to our display. Push color over here. This just pushes a 16-bit color, and it splits into two 8-bit values, and one by one it's going to be written into our display. LCD data, top 8 bits, and then bottom 8 bits, same as normal. And then the last function we have to worry about 
is this LCD clear function. We had to select the area window to 0, 0, that's our starting x and y, and our end x and y, 240 and 320. So this will be able to select the entire display that we want to write to, and then for pixel data, we'll look at that next. You probably used a loop in a loop before. This makes it much more simpler, so the Arduino doesn't have to worry about with 20,000 bit numbers, anyway. And then we push the color that's being sent into this function over here. So we can put any color that we want onto a display and clear it. Pretty simple stuff. So now we're going to convert this into 6502 code. And uh, yeah, I've already done that. Perfect, right? Else you can see the LCD initialization function here. And then our color, uh, color clear loop over here, just the same in our Arduino code, which is down here. And let's go back. We've also got the LCD clear function in here. It's a little bit more complicated because we have to use 16-bit loops. But uh, I will put this code in the description. And the way this loop works is just we're storing the counter values into some memory. And then we decrement them and then check if it's zero. And if it's not, we branch, which is this branch not equal, back to the top of this label over here. And then same for X. So this mean basically means a loop in the loop. Simple. We've also got the area select command here. This works a little bit different because um, XL0 and XL1, this basically is just the X0 and X1 variables split into two. Because remember, our 6502 is 8-bit and our Arduinos are 16-bit, really. And same for a Y cell, Y cell 0 plus 1 because they're two 8-bit values. And same for a Y1. They're also split into two 8-bit values, and same command over here, and we're done. LCD CMD and LCD data, they're pretty much all the same with our Arduino. And the delays here, I'm just using hardware uh, CPU clock counting with similar loops. And yes, I am saving the registers so they don't get corrupted. And then same for 1 millisecond, 120 milliseconds, and 10 milliseconds. And yeah, pretty simple stuff. So, let's compile this with our assembler, and I have to find all of the values up here. And then LCD clear, we just write that, we just write whatever color we want into our, the color, which is this, into our color memory, and then we write that to the display. And also we've got the area select command being used in the LCD clear function, just like in our Arduino program. So now I'm going to compile this. Now, there are two more things we need. First is the EEPROM programmer, because just like Ben Eater's video, he has a programmer that he has to write the ROM code into. And also our assembler. So I'm going to be using VASM for Windows 10, basically the same one that Ben Eater used. And uh, yeah, you can see that is this in the command prompt over here. I'm going to address the special command that I have used to rebuild our uh, assembly file into a binary file that we can write to a 6502. Nice! So now we have generated a binary file. Now I'm going to use my programmer software over here to write that to our EEPROM. So I'm going to plug the EEPROM in. I'm going to select the device. Ooh. Yeah, the software is a little bit slow and a little bit buggy. And now I'm going to open my hex file, or binary file, really. So let's go into... C, users, me, and then uh, assembly language. And now we're going to VBCC win, and then bin win, and we can find our a.out file. We're going to load that. And program it into our EEPROM. This programmer is quite old, so it's not registering the pins well. And now we just wait for it to finish. Wow, 11 seconds. That was long. And now I'm going to take the EEPROM out of the programmer. Okay, let's see if it works. Got the wrong EEPROM in. Now we're going to power R6502. And reset. Do 
There it is. It's quite slow because it is running at 2 megahertz, but it does work. So it's just going red, green, blue, and white. Now this is faster than 6502 SPI because uh, the shift register isn't uh, very good. And also, if we calculate very carefully, the shift register using our system clock, which is 2 megahertz, it isn't much faster than parallel mode. So yeah, I'm going to call this video a success. It works. Now you can customize this program to do really whatever you want. And uh, you can display some cool patterns, maybe do some shapes, and uh, you can... Uh, <laughs> Do whatever you want with it. You can even display some text if you want to. You just had to write your own font. And I have written my own font. I might put that in the description as well if you guys want it. And uh, yeah, I'm calling this a success. So this is how you interface the 6502 with a TFT display that runs on the ST7789V. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> we, got, we got this working, finally. Foreshadowing for the next episode, I'm going to hook one of these TFTs to a C51 or Raspberry Pi or a STM32. And uh, some other videos that may, co may come up is the 18 Mega 16 series that I promise. And also a continuation to uh, the 65816 series. Yeah, there's been a lot of work going on recently. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful, and also got a little bit deeper understanding of how these ST7789 displays work. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. And again, a huge thanks for 94 subscribers already. I didn't expect this channel to blow up that fast.